And then we went over to Hungary. I met his mom. It was so great. It was so much fun. We had so much fun traveling all over. I'm looking forward to being able to to, uh, do tours like that again. We met some wonderful people. um, Fabulous time. So I can't think of anybody better to give this talk about uniting the different skeptical groups. Um, I think that... um, you know, we're more powerful as an organization and being able to be together with each other and to get things done if we know each other. And I don't think language should be an obstacle. And I don't think location is an obstacle as well, especially as we're proving right here on Zoom that we're able to have these conferences in real time, record it, um, you know, and uh, I think we're, we're going to be okay. I really am optimistic about it. So I'd like to, un- um, I'd like to introduce Andrash. I need to do some fancy stuff over here that is I'm not as comfortable doing but I will try so I'm going to pin Andrash where are you where are you Andrash there you are I am here I am here I see you there I'm going to spotlight you and you're going to be able to share screen right yes I will so if at least I hope so so this is spotlighting what I've done for you right now so you should just be able to see Andrash when we go to Q&A it'll be Andrash and I and if you guys want to go so that you see everybody on the screen in the upper right hand corner there is a gallery view that you can click on all right Andrash I'm going to mute myself and and, uh, everybody else can be muted uh, moderators Uh, Andrash you'll have to remember to unmute yourself because they're about to mute you yeah okay Uh, so Thank you very much, uh, and thank you very much for inviting me. Um, it's a little bit surprising since um, um, this is the Monterey uh, County's skeptic camp, uh, but I'm so happy to join you guys uh, from here in Hungary, uh, from from basically the other side of the planet. And um, well, this is exactly what I'd like to talk about: uh, that how the uh, the international skeptic movement could be a little bit more. Um, about collaborations, more about about working together in in tackling all the pseudoscience out there. I apologize for my uh, for my look and for for the background and how I um, occasionally very weirdly appear um, in front of my background. But uh, believe me, this is much better uh, than than the tube like environment that I'm currently in. So I hope that, that doesn't affect the, the sound quality that much. All right, so about myself, I'm, my name is Andras Pinter. As um, uh, Susan very nicely said, um, she, <laughs> she learned to pronounce my Hungarian name very nicely over the years. Uh, and uh, I'm very happy to call her uh, my friend. Um, and I learned a lot from her. Uh, that what she leads is one of the great examples of international collaboration, uh, guerrilla skepticism on Wikipedia. And uh, I am, as she said, uh, traveling to a guide, currently not very busy uh, with, with that kind of uh, work, as you might imagine. And uh, I'm the, the, the president of the Hungarian Skeptic Society. I'm also on the board of uh, the European Council of Skeptical Organizations, uh, also known as EXO. And uh, I'm the initiator, uh, the producer, and a co-host of the European Skeptics Podcast, the logo of which you can see on the upper corner of my um, screen. So um, wh- why do we need to organize um, a- on an international level? Uh, that's what I'd like to uh, talk about basically. And for that, I'd like to share my screen as well. Uh, Hope that works. Can you see my screen now? I hope so. Our Susan is muted, so I won't be good. Yes, we can hear you. We can see it. We can see it. Okay. Okay, good, good. Um, All right. So let me start by saying that uh, of course, we are all aware that uh, we, we have we all have very different interests uh, uh, and approaches to how to 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 fight pseudoscience and how to uh, try to get the word of skepticism out there. 
Uh, also, we have different resources. Uh, if you if you imagine that uh, there are podcasts out there, there are organizations out there who can actually employ people to do that this kind of uh, work. And but most of the organizations, most most of the skeptical activism is uh, is happening on a, on a voluntary basis. Uh, but uh, apart from that, there is a lot of um, uh, human uh, resources, human capacities that that uh, we can exploit in uh, in fighting pseudoscience. science. Uh, the social environments are very different as well. Um, so for example, when it comes to skeptics in the pub uh, events that can be organized all over the all over the world, uh, in some cultures, uh, going out and listening to talks at a pub environment is 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 not really uh, appealing to many. But uh, in some environments, it's 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 it goes without saying that sitting in a pub and listening to someone is an amazing um, uh, pastime activity. But the other thing that uh, we have to bear in mind is that there, is there are language barriers uh, and, and, and those kind of cultural differences that uh, some uh, uh, sorts of pseudoscience uh, go very well in uh, or, or get very much support in one country and doesn't necessarily get that much support in another country. Uh, one example being uh, homeopathy that uh, in certain European countries, homeopathy, the, the support for homeopathy is very, very different. Um, in its birthplace in Germany, it's very, it's huge. It's, it's massive. Everyone uses homeopathy, uh, but the counter effect is big as well. So the German skeptical organization is fighting homeopathy with all the knowledge, all the knowledge uh, put out there uh, by someone uh, it, it was uh, their uh, project was uh, led uh, by someone who's uh, who used to be a homeopath herself um, uh, Natalie Grams I don't know if you've uh, heard of her but if not please uh, look her up uh, that the, the work she, that she does is amazing but there are there are things that are often overlooked so I'm not sure that uh, listeners are, uh, of um, of this or those who are watching are uh, people in the United States uh, who are following the, the skeptical movement there, uh, they probably haven't heard of the, the German skeptical organization GVLP uh, or, or uh, the International um, Information Network Homeopathy, their, their major project to, to tackle that issue. Um, and that is because of the language barrier that I, that I mentioned earlier, uh, mostly that uh, most of the organizations obviously uh, do local organizations do the activism uh, on their local language, which probably is not understood by too many uh, in other countries. And uh, that results in a, in a poor uh, communication between organizations. Um, and, and that means that even though we occasionally come up with uh, resources that could be used by other organizations as well, or other activists, uh, it doesn't really reach those people. Those those uh, um, things don't really uh, reach those people. And um, but there are major projects. There are amazing projects out there and organizations that uh, definitely de deserve our attention and our focus. One of them is uh, in the UK. It's the Good Thinking Society. Um, uh, Richard Saunders is here, and he will be talking as well uh, on the on the Skeptic Zone. We hear a lot about the Good Thinking Society, and uh, to to his credit, he has been giving a lot of room uh, for uh, other international uh, people of outreach, um, very prominent skeptics from from different countries. And uh, in in this regard, um, my podcast or our podcast, uh, the European Skeptics Podcast. Uh, has a lot to thank Richard for because uh, he gave us a, a, a good um, uh, example of how to do this. And uh, there is Sense About Science also from the UK, but they have a very wide international outreach. Uh, they launched a campaign that's called Ask for Evidence, and that has been actually picked up by other organizations in Europe. Uh, the Italian skeptics, Cicap, also on, the, on my list here, uh, they they uh, started their own Ask for Evidence campaign, but on the basis of the UK version. So that is a great example of how uh, other 
languages can can use resources that are or, or already available in English and translate that and try to um, shape it in a way that it fits their environment, their local environment and their, their local uh, language. And GVOP is uh, one example of that as well. But they are not only good at uh, translating English material into Hungary, uh, into German material, they are their own lang uh, language. Sorry, I, I mentioned Hungarian because that is my uh, native language. Uh, but GVOP does something else as well. Uh, they provide, they produce their uh, content basically in German, but occasionally they do translate it themselves so that it, it, they make it available to others who understand or speak uh, um, English, but they can use those materials by translation into their own language. Uh, so the Czech uh, uh, skeptics, the Hungarian skeptics, we could use those materials and, uh, and that saves us a lot of time and energy because we don't have to come up with something new. We can use what's already out there. And the old trials campaign, you might, might have heard of that, that is truly international. Uh, that was uh, launched partly by Sense About Science as well, uh, also uh, Evidence Matters. But I'm, I'm mentioning lots of campaigns by Sense About Science and the Good Thinking Society. And I have to mention something about this, that they are the organizations that have the resources, financial resources, as, uh, uh, I, I have to add, uh, to employ people to employ people so that they can do this full time. Uh, and that makes a huge difference. It's a massive difference that, that this makes uh, because they can actually get things done uh, much more frequently, much more effectively, because uh, obviously with people who dedicate their free time, or occasionally virtually non-existing free time to something like this, um, that means that things occasionally don't really get done. Uh, Yaman Savar, uh, you might have heard of that. Um, that's uh, a Turkish um, project uh, for Turkish audiences, which is a massive, a massive audience. So uh, the, 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 the Turkish speaking people in the world, uh, they are very massive in numbers. Uh, they have to be reached. And uh, especially because uh, some pseudosciences are connected to religious uh, backgrounds, religious uh, uh, networks. And uh, that can, uh, with, with highly religious societies and cultures, um, it can be a, a great issue that is difficult to tackle. And there is a Swiss think tank as well uh, that has been do, uh, uh, producing uh, English speaking uh, content as well. So there is a lot to, to, to keep track of. Uh, but the, the other side of that is that pseudosciences don't respect borders. Uh, they don't stop at a border of a country. It doesn't matter whether uh, and it's it's in Italian, it's in German, where uh, how it how it was born. It can be translated, and boom, it's it's already spread across Europe and then across the whole world. Uh, I'm usually uh, approaching things from a European perspective, uh, firstly. Uh, and that is because that has been our focus for a uh, uh, great many years. But uh, when when you uh, what are what are the the, the most uh, important examples? COVID nineteen denial that we've seen a lot in twenty twenty. Uh, that is truly international. We've seen a lot of translated content in different countries uh, of uh, different uh, uh, speaking different uh, native languages. Uh, that that originated from other countries. Uh, some uh, some of them were were uh, produced in English, like uh, Vaxed and um, and obviously um, a Plandemic that uh, that was a massive hit all over Europe as well. So it doesn't matter that it, it wasn't produced in a in a uh, language not spoken by all. Uh, climate change denial we've seen it all over the place as well. Uh, just reaching different corners of, of uh, the world. The anti-vax movement, uh, support for homeopathy. Uh, the flat earthers uh, had their words uh, spread like wildfire as well, even though it's probably the most important, uh, the, the, the most ridiculous, uh, absolutely nonsensical uh, kind of pseudoscience. Uh, chemtrails, uh, Susan mentioned uh, how uh, I was wearing a chemtrail.hu um, uh, t-shirt when we were having our first lunch together. 
and uh, that was a bit of a bit, bit, uh, little project of the Hungarian Skeptic Society um, that, uh, I, as far as I know, gave uh, a, a good um, idea to to some other European um, uh, organizations. So what we did was uh, we put up a website, uh, chemtrail.hu, with all the correct information about contrails and uh, how uh, clouds are forming and uh, uh, how uh, airplanes are being tested for their balance and all, and all that, that, that stuff. And uh, we made up this t-shirt and went on to one of their conventions. And uh, they they were absolutely excited about that 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 some someone has that kind of t-shirt and they wanted to buy those t-shirts and uh, we directed them to the website uh, chemtrail.hu and um, and they they were so excited so we basically um, did a bit of a trolling kind of uh, ag action there uh, but we are very proud of that that. Um, I, I don't know how to to what extent it was due to that uh, action of ours, but the the chemtrail movement in Hungary basically died out. So it's it it has very little support in the country as as of now. Uh, but also there are all kinds of conspiracy theories that we can mention. But there are other issues that we have to uh, bear in mind, and uh, that is that the the, the pseudo scientific. Um, ideas can spread with the support of large-scale international organizations. One of them is the WHO. Uh, you probably all know that the WHO uh, has had a great support for traditional Chinese medicine. Um, it, it doesn't necessarily mean that they, they do propagate that, but they did include it in their manifesto when they came out with recommendations um, for for the world of healthcare, and that was that was quite a controversial issue, but it is something that shows that an international, large scale international organization of great respect can peddle pseudoscience as well in their own way. And the other uh, organization of that kind is the European Union. I'm very fond of the European Union. I think that is one of the greatest things that have emerged uh, of uh, European politics. But uh, the, the European Union also has support for homeopathy, indirect support for homeopathy, and they are serving the anti-GMO sentiment uh, all over Europe. Uh, with the legislation that they put through uh, the, the European uh, Parliament and the European Council. So if we look at that, that is a great challenge to the international movement, because as long as we have the support of the European Union uh, towards something that's absolutely nonsensical, how can we argue that this should be off the shelves of the pharmacies? The, the, the legal environment allows for that. How can we argue that it shouldn't be there? So this is an issue that we only can tackle if we work together. So we have to be stronger and we are only stronger if we work together. Uh, it is the way this, that, that science works as well. So it's a great example. Uh, when, you, when you look at the, the, the fight against COVID-19, uh, you have to notice how it was an international endeavor. It, the, the, the fight for a cure, the fight for the vaccine, uh, and it's, it's an ongoing a development that there are still projects that are ongoing, uh, but we at have at least three vaccines readily available at the moment as we speak. And uh, that is thanks to an international collaboration um, in the world of science. And that is because science knows exactly, the, the, the method of science is based on the shared knowledge and experience and the criticism towards uh, the, the new outcome and the criticism towards everything uh, that, is, that is new in science so that we can make sure that we don't do anything stupid uh, in the long run at least. So, and we have to combine our resources and efforts. So as in the world of science, one organization and one uh, research institution cannot do everything. So we have to split the work and combine the resources.
And this is what I argue for on an international level in the skeptic movement as well. Uh, and one of the reasons why we need to do that is because we have to build up some lobbying potential. And uh, we have to make sure that uh, by lobbying, we don't mean the, the thing that uh, conspiracy theorists often mention about um, the lizard people uh, controlling everything in the back, from the background, and especially George Soros. Um, sorry, I, I, when I speak about him in an English speaking environment, I, only, I always uh, say Soros, but the original name of his is Soros, which is Hungarian because he's of Hungarian origin. Uh, but the other thing is that, and I've already mentioned that partly, is that when we look at each uh, organization's work and some activists uh, how, and what kind of work they do, um, and we share it with each other, uh, then we can get inspiration. I already mentioned how Richard Saunders inspired us to, 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 to start the European Skeptics podcast. Um, and, um, and that is a great, a, a great power uh, that that we have if we if we share all our knowledge and experience, uh, and one of the ways to do it is the international com uh, conferences, con conventions, uh, different events. Uh, Susan mentioned QED, Question Explore Discover, where we all met, and uh, the European Skeptics Congress is one of those as well. Uh, TAM, that uh, that that used to be a, a great thing uh, as and uh, correct me if I'm mistaken, but I think it's not going to happen anymore. Uh, but it brought together a lot of skeptics. But other skeptical uh, conventions have grown out of the, the movement as well. Uh, but skeptics in the pub events can bring people to, together on a local uh, um, scale. But uh, some skeptics in the pub organizers do international outreach as well. So occasionally in the UK, for example, they bring over speakers from outside the country. Not this year, not, not in 2020, obviously. But this has been a great opportunity for the skeptic movement to provide all that resources, uh, all those resources on an online version. In an online version, this is how I can speak at your event, uh, uh, the, the event for the Monterey uh, Counter Skeptics. And uh, uh, yeah, so I think this is something to lo look out for, uh, these kinds of events. And uh, the online world gives us a great opportunity to, to move that forward. And I mentioned a couple of uh, international campaigns as well. Uh, 1023 homeopathy, nothing in it in 2011. That was a big hit all over the world. And it initiated from one country. And it started from the UK. And uh, that was just a small idea. And it grew into a big international thing. All trials is the same. Guerrilla skepticism on Wikipedia, thanks to um, Susan, uh, it, it has... A, an in, a truly international team of editors. And that to see that occasionally, that is absolutely amazing and uplifting. Uh, if you remember, Britain Mary Hermes's uh, court case, when she got sued by, uh, by other naturopaths, and that was a truly amazing international endeavor. When, when the international skeptic movement uh, worked together, uh, the Australian skeptics has had had a, a great had had their hands uh, in that uh, in initiating that that uh, and uh, they they did a, a brilliant job in uh, spreading the word, uh, but it became truly international. Uh, and now there are two Belgian skeptics who are being sued uh, for libel based on something absolutely factual that they they wrote up uh, in an article for the for SCAP, the, the, the Belgian skeptical organization. And now we are trying to to help them. Here you can see uh, the website that they put up for um, the, mm -hmm. uh, this this uh, organization. So uh, they are being sued for, for 400, more than 400,000 euros in compensation for, for defamation. I don't understand. And, excuse me? So I mentioned a couple of spokespeople um, uh, who are uh, not necessarily um, of uh, from English-speaking countries. Edward Ernst, uh, you probably all know him. 
uh, but he does international outreach. Massimo Polidoro uh, from uh, the Cheek Up, the Italian Skeptics, he does international outreach. Uh, you've heard Mark Marshall on several podcasts, I'm, I'm, I'm sure. Richard Saunders, whom I mentioned or, uh, already, and he's, he, he's going to be giving a talk. And Susan Gerbic. Um, uh, these people who are who understand the necessity of an international collaboration uh, should be heard more often. But the importance of communication brings up the idea, uh, the, the question of how to disseminate the ideas and, and try to build hubs um, on an international level. Podcasts can be used for that. And um, <laughs> I'd like to mention that uh, here's a, a, a little uh, word, UFSO, and that comes from um, the moment when we had a chat, Richard, I think it was you um, who, who came up with the idea of the United Federation of Skeptical Podcasts. Sorry, it's not UFSO, it's USFP. Uh, never mind. But uh, United Federation of Skeptical Podcasts. I'm all, I'm all for that. Um, and we had the support of uh, um, Jay Novella as well uh, for that idea from uh, the Skeptics Guide to the Universe. Um, yeah, I think the more we talk about international stuff, uh, uh, as opposed to just local, like the United, by local for, for the United States, I, I mean, it's, it's yeah, um, it's a massive country, um, the, the size of Europe, so uh, it, it's not truly local. But um, culturally speaking, it's quite it's quite closed if we stay within uh, the United States. Uh, EXO meetings, the United uh, uh, EXO being the European Council of Skeptical Organization. And the European uh, skeptical uh, congresses, skepticans like this one, uh, we need to do more of these. And um, the European Council of Skeptical Organizations came out of a bit of a dormant state a couple of years ago. Uh, now, with the leaving of um, uh, uh, Claire Klingenberg from the Czech uh, Czech Republic, and um, uh, we are trying to be more active and more acting more like an umbrella organization uh, for the different organizations and uh, recruiting new, new member organizations as well. Uh, we try to unite those um, different groups of skeptics uh, and, and provide administrative support for them and uh, trying to operate on an international level, organizing events uh, and uh, encouraging and supporting actions uh, on a European level. Not necessarily truly international, I mean, outside of the European scope, but um, we try to educate and we try to reach uh, EU legislators as well. We're not doing, currently not doing very well on that, on that front, but uh, we are trying to recruit people who can do much more uh, and do some lobbying as well. So this is the website of the European Council of Skeptical Organizations. And I'd like to mention my podcast to, to finish on. Uh, that is the European Skeptics podcast that we started in 2015, uh, a couple of months after the 2015 European Skeptics Congress in London, where um, with a, friend, a couple of friends of mine, uh, we were, whom we were brought together by, by Susan Gerbic, and, and I'd like to thank you again, Susan, for that, uh, Pontus being one of them, and uh, Jelena, who already left the show, but uh, um, we got uh, Onika now, who's from Germany, and we try to provide a, a mostly European focus, but we we interview people uh, who are the major players of international skepticism, not necessarily from Europe. We, we've had uh, other skeptics from all over the world as well. Uh, we've uh, conducted, well, more than more than 100 uh, interviews so far. And uh, we uh, report on events happening across Europe. Uh, we have different segments that we try to educate uh, our uh, audiences. And uh, we try to uh, spread the news. Um, we, we try to get the information from countries where English is not the first language. And we try to share that information in English so that others can be inspired Others can 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 uh, learn from it and learn uh, what new things are, are there to to work with, and uh, we have listeners from uh, more than uh, five, fifty countries, and uh, interestingly, the most listeners we've got uh, are from the United States. So apparently, there is a lot of interest in the United States uh, towards uh, what's going on in Europe, and uh, yeah, I think. I overused a little bit of my time, so uh, sorry about that. But uh, 
I what I'd like to say to 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 close this with is that we need to unite. We need to work much more closely together on an international level, and uh, basically learn from uh, each other and learn what's going on in each other's countries. And uh, this is what we're trying to provide with the European Skeptics Podcast as well. Uh, but we need organizations on an international level as well. Thank you very much for your attention. That was terrific. That was terrific. Thank you so much, Andras. That was great. Now, let me just, Thank you. let me figure out Thank how you. I can spotlight myself on here as well so that I can um, ask you a few questions. Okay, so it should be you and I. Oh, wow, this Zoom thing is pretty cool. Hello. Things that, that we've <laughs> learned from um, this pandemic that we're, we're able to do it. We've got a couple of questions that, because uh, we have a couple minutes before we're going to go to the next speaker. One of them, I think you answered uh, from Avi, was about the skeptical, uh, the out, uh, Rob, the outreach of the ESP. You said that the majority of the speaker, uh, your listeners are in the in America, and that um, one of the things they asked is, is it growing? Do you feel like the ESP podcast is growing? Yes, uh, we are slowly but surely growing, yeah. Uh, or we've been for, for the last uh, one or two years at least. Uh, for the first couple of years, it was pretty much stable, but now it's, uh, it's growing. And do you have any idea of what your outreach is that you can say? Or is that not something that's easy to know? Oh, I don't, uh, it's not, it's not easy to know, uh, but we have a couple thousand downloads per week, I think, uh, which is not very much of an outreach. <coughs> I mean, but when we set out to do this, we didn't do this um, to, to reach uh, a, the, the general public on a, on a massive scale. We did it for skeptics. So we wanted to, to give skeptics uh, like, like a hub. Uh, of information and and a, and, and a meeting place, um, and and I think we've been we've been delivering on that, mm -hmm. um, but uh, that means that with a world so full of um, skeptical podcasts in English, uh, I'm I'm pretty sure that one of the reasons why we don't have a better outreach is is that that uh, they are all, their feeds are already full of of uh, of brilliant podcasts uh, which we've been trying to live up to that um and <laughs> and those others uh but i truly believe that we are doing something different yes i agree i think this is a uh, podcast to me i think are probably the way we're going to be able to get our message out faster and cheaper and to a wider audience and uh, richard saunders will be talking about that again and i think that especially if we're going to be doing more podcasts in english we got to really watch to make sure that we're very different from each other um, yeah but we definitely need more language non-english language podcasts i think for sure uh, another question that we got was <laughs> about skeptic groups in other countries and we did have uh lisa and other people posting in the chat different countries that have that have podcasts as well i'm not podcasts but um uh groups are you aware of anything in central america south america um they said that the, not really the only ones they're hearing about are in australia europe canada and occasionally hong kong and india hong kong doesn't mm. have an activist group um neither does well india does but it is um dangerous over in india to, to yeah uh, to speak out, we've written their Wikipedia page for the rational. They call themselves the rationalists of India. Well, Hong Kong is 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 slowly but surely getting there as well. So it's a meetup uh, group it, more than yeah. I no, would, no, I, I mean, spoke... I mean the the, the, the place is uh, oh yeah, is yeah, moving, yeah. moving towards it being being a bit dangerous to to speak out against. Uh, right, there is a meetup group in certain stuff. Hong Kong skeptics. I've been there and I've done the Hong Kong skeptics. It's a like you hang out and beautiful scenery and you drink beer. And yeah. uh, I did, did give a talk, but it wasn't as <clears throat> like um, hugely attended, but it was really nice. Do you have any, sp okay, well, let's see if you can answer this one quickly. Uh, okay, Jean, I'll try. Jean says, do you have any specific suggestions for local groups in the US or wherever? Um, local groups, they should, they should build up their own audience and, uh, and try to encourage them to, to look out for, for activists uh, that that should be followed and the examples of whom should be followed um, because 
you, we don't have to come up. And, and one of the things that I wanted to, to emphasize with this is we don't have to come up with your own ideas all the time. Uh, it's much easier. Skeptics in the pub events can be a thing. Uh, we've tried that, uh, but in Hungarian environment, it doesn't work, but it, it works in the German environment. It works in, in, in uh, not necessarily a French environment. In French environment, it, uh, what works is, is mostly like a cafe, a skeptical cafe. Um, so, um, but, but you can work out things based on what there's already out there. And if there is content that you want to work on, uh, look for English content and uh, translate it. Uh, one of the things that I forgot to mention, and I want to finish with that, is the debunking handbook 2020. Uh, it's a massive uh, large scale tra uh, translation um, project uh, um, going on as we speak. And um, it's, it's a collection of the best and most up to date science on how to go and, and try to fight through the science and, and how to, how to, to debunk properly or pre-bunk, uh, which is much more than debunking. And uh, we need a lot of people to translate that into their own languages so that we can reach a great many uh, speakers of, of not English. I haven't heard of that. Uh, you'll have to send me a link that we can put out. And let me have you end real quick on, um, Pontus has an event uh, calendar that you yes. guys keep up. And I find that very valuable. Not that I'm in Europe at all, but I think that if people are going to be going on vacation in the future, imagine a time when we're able to go on vacation or maybe we have a work, we have to go to Europe for a work related something. Maybe they can plan an extra day to meet up with one of the groups in Europe. Can you mention that link uh, that Pontus has been keeping up? Uh, yeah, if you go online, if you go to the ESP.EU, uh, you will find uh, among the many items, you will find events in Europe. And uh, so it's the ESP.EU uh, that you just need to follow and uh, you'll find the, the, the page. Yeah, if one of the moderators... And it's in a calendar movie. format. It's, it's, it's brilliant. Uh, it's a calendar format. It's a lot of work. Uh, I know Janine yeah. has been asking about something like that in the United States. And I said, oh my gosh, that is just... Crazy, crazy, crazy. Uh, yeah, I'm and not Pontus, a... my friend Pontus takes care of that, and um, he, he's doing a um, very good job at that. Uh, yeah, and I, 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 Carlos had just mentioned in the chat something about the Pope and maybe having the Pope on the show. <laughs> um, I have to mention that when I spoke in um, Italy, uh, mm -hmm. the Pope did come to town. Uh, we he were there was together, speaking yeah. There, Andrasha, Mark, and I were there, and the Pope was out there in the um right outside of well almost right outside of the venue where we were at we had to push through the crowds to get to get to our uh, convention yeah. the big giant screen tvs all over the place and we saved him a seat because he was done right he was on <laughs> from eight till ten and then my talk was at ten so we kind of saved him a seat right in the front in case <laughs> You know, he wanted to come hang out, but he didn't, didn't show. show. But didn't uh, show. I am going to share. I am going to share <clears> one <throat> photo. Uh, this is Mark Edward and um, Pontus in uh, not Pontus uh, Andras in front of the the church where the Pope was speaking. <laughs> yeah, in Italy. And do you remember that our rental car was towed because of? Uh, yeah, the rental car was towed, towed because of. Towed uh, he didn't get away because because I parked in the wrong place and Andras, uh, they they cleared the area for the Pope. He speaks Italian also, you guys. He's great to travel with, but I guess you didn't really get what was saying on the sign to not be parking there because the Pope was going. <laughs> no, I was just not paying attention. I, I just I just didn't see. You were on there. I, I, could have, I could have worked it out, but uh, no. <laughs> so we're going to have to have the Pope come and hang out. I mean. Yeah, we, okay, we, we have the Pope on every week, basically, because uh, Pontus pokes him uh, every week. That's, uh, there's a segment called Pontus Pokes the Pope. And uh, yeah, he gives us a lot of lot of content to. to I know on. more about the Pope than I ever would have known because Pontus is segment. All right, so I guess I got to end because I just got to save time. But I could I could talk to you for another hour. That'd be great. We would. Hey, Susan, so, uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I hear a voice somewhere, somewhere. Yeah, Susan. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's Harlan. Um, I just I would just want you to know my feelings are kind of hurt. Why? It seems like you have a party going on in your house because the doorbell keeps ringing every five <laughs> minutes and I wasn't invited. I just feel a little bad. 
Oh, I'm I'm so sorry. You're you're welcome to come and stand in the doorway or something. But no, the doorbell is actually people coming and going from the from the from the uh, from Zoom. So oh. yeah, no no party here. The doorbell is people coming and going from people entering Zoom, and we are at 56 people in here at the moment. 56 individual screens and more. And then there's also a YouTube channel that has probably. 15 people or something like that on YouTube. So we are, we're getting close to 70 people, I think.